We just got 3D done 3D printing uh, frog for my daughter using the enraged rabbit carrot feeder. And the whole time we had this issue. So if you notice, this lever here is connected to the cutter that goes across and cuts filament when it's done. However, it is stuck in the forward position. And it stays that way. Now, I've done a lot of work clearancing inside where the blade comes across. And I've done a lot of other tuning for it. And this issue seems to be the last one that's holding out. So I had an idea. And we're gonna make some changes. While that was printing, I did some 3D printing over here. Got some parts. Kind of stuck on there. Uh, trying to get these off one handed isn't fun. But if you notice, there's a hole going through these levers. Focus, there we go. And we modified the end of this to hopefully take a 6x3 magnet. Now these aren't pretty because they were printed extremely fast with some very wet filament that's been around for over two years. But we'll see if we can make them work. So I just uh, put this all together and realized that I hadn't been recording. So what we've got here. We put M4 grub screw in here. And what that is going to do is grab onto our magnet here. Um, and then when it depresses and then goes to pull back, hopefully pulls this back out of the way so that when it goes to load the next piece of filament, it doesn't grab. Now, you'll notice that this blade is different than the one that's recommended in the bill of materials. And that's because I had problems with the one that's recommended in the bill of materials chipping when cutting filament in very short order. Um, like sometimes on the first cut, it would chip that blade. So this one's a little thicker, a little wider made it fit, had to do some clearancing inside so that that thickness wouldn't interfere. Um, and I've tried many springs. This is the heaviest spring I could find. Can't go any longer, otherwise it won't decompress all the way. Uh, can't go any thicker of a spring uh, gauge wire because I can't find one. So th after a couple dozen different ballpoint pens checking all of them this was the thickest pen spring I could find um, so again M4 grub screw threaded into there and we'll get it put back together and see what happens All right, so we've got everything reinstalled. Let's see what it does. Let's go ahead and uh, home this up. Zero. It's going to take a minute to 
heat that nozzle up all the way. Now, the frog I was printing yesterday, I was printing as a test print. Not sure if I said that earlier or not, but what I was testing was, I built this back in January, and January to February. It took a while to get it uh, completely going. Uh, I had some issues with CAN bus, and um, ended up having to change out the power supply. Just did not have enough with that buck converter, even though technically it's supposed to put out more power than the mean well for high volt power supply. I was having connection issues. Uh, changed, switched the Raspberry Pi over to a Pi 4 from a Pi 3B. But haven't had any issues with that since. What I have had to deal with is tuning some stuff. Uh, the reason why I was running that test print was to test using silk PLA. Silk PLA has a little bit of TPU in it and as such it tends to poof out a little bit when heated. So what would happen was when changing that filament it would pull it back up away from the hot end before it cut it and that it would swell inside the cold side of that Dragon high flow hot end. And then when it went to load the next one, it would be jammed. Um, sometimes I can push it through, most of the time not. That kills the print. Um, big pain in the butt. Multicolor prints are always multi-hours. And um, when you can't get reliable swaps, then you get a couple hours into a print and it just does that extremely irritating. It's a lot of wasted film. There's already a lot of waste with purge blocks and everything else. Um, but I want to be able to make some cool stuff. Mostly uh, trinkets for kids. Um, I sell the Cinder Wings Dragons to some stores that resell them and being able to do some of the cooler multicolor ones. I can charge more for them and make more money for them. And then they've got some on the shelves that all the other places that seem to be selling those things today don't have. Uh, with the prevalence of bamboo printers and whatnot, that's probably going to change. But so far, I haven't seen it in my area. Um, anyway, uh, so I was doing that frog print testing with some silk filaments. Uh, two different ones, an inland purple and uh, a uh, Jesse PLA uh, gunmetal gray which it, I don't know whether it's a silk filament or not but it's definitely got the uh, look of a silk filament um, but I had no issues over the almost 200 changes for the frog. The only issues I had were with this lever getting stuck in the middle of the uh, filament path. It wasn't a huge deal, just you know, move it, feed the filament, and go. But still, uh, if that happens in the middle of the night on a print, it's only going to stay paused for you know 10 minutes or so before it starts cooling down, and then parts not stuck to the plate and you're out of luck um, even if it does uh, stepper motors are going to have power cut to them and they're going to drop and as you saw it's home with clicky so uh, there's no way to rehome it and pick it up where it left off I want to be able to print stuff and not have to sit here and babysit it so it doesn't get used very much because of that um, what I did to resolve the silk issue is I was slowly backing down the amount that it retracts that filament. And I was down to only retracting 20 millimeters on the Dragon High Flow, which is like 32 millimeters in length. So 
I just said, forget it, let's just do five millimeters, just barely pull it. All right, so let's uh, try to extrude some material here. Let's extrude 25 millimeters. Excuse me. got blue loaded in there right now so we'll extrude it till the blue's out and then we know that uh, it's all the way down there to the hot end all right I'm seeing some blue Change this over the tool. One. See what it does. See if it pulls that lever out. And it did. Let me see if I can get you a better angle on that, though. Just push that through. We've got gray loaded back up in there. Two. See it to press that lever and pull it right back with it. Works flawlessly. Um, there's no CAD files for this if you're interested in doing it yourself. I actually did all this in Orca Slicer. In Slicer, Percy Slicer, you can do the same thing. Just added negative volume for a 6.2 by 3.5 millimeter circle to the center and the end of that decompression part. And then a uh, 3.9 millimeter hole through that lever at the angle to match the divot that's there and just printed it. So uh, slicers make it super easy if you're doing simple modifications like that to a part to not have to open up Fusion or whatever other CAD program you like or dislike or don't know how to use yet. Because um, I've made a few simple things in Fusion, but I am by no means a uh, CAD expert, uh, far from it. But doing that in Slicer made it super easy. Uh, I might go back and dry this filament in the dryer and put it in a slower setting so that I've got some better looking parts. Or maybe not. I don't know. 
Uh, this thing's going to be looking to get it rebuilt. I've got a blue frame that's going to go in, swapped out to it, and probably reprint everything that goes in it uh, this winter. So maybe I reprint those now, maybe I just wait until I'm rebuilding. Either way, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe if you made it this far. Uh, really appreciate it if you do. And if you have any questions, I try to answer everybody that asks anything in the comments. Alright, later.